I, I brought learning stuff up, so please come put your hands on the stuff. I brought a full set up here. Um, I brought a full frame of wax. Go ahead and start passing that around. Okay. Just take a peek at it. No, no. <laughs> no, there's no bees. I put that in the freezer. Um, oh, that's cool. That was out of another colony that I had that I had to clean out. I actually got to kill the queen last week. Um, merge it with another hive, but that we'll, we won't get into that. What's the website for this? This is Heroes to Hives. You dot just org? Just yeah, just org? type in Heroes to Hives online. Okay. Yeah, just Google it, Heroes to Hives. Okay. And it'll come. Go to your online course. Right? And this is uh, dot com. You just. Dot com. Uh, it's dot edu because it's going to take you to edu. Michigan State University. It's an extension, right? Okay. So follow, just follow the links through, and those, it's a pretty simple walkthrough process. It's free to veterans and their family members. Okay, so if you got family members that want to do beekeeping, sign them up. Okay, it's a 12-month course. It's all online. It's free. It's great. They teach you a foundation, and they build you up from there to into your beekeeping experience. Okay, because again, I don't know everything about beekeeping, and I still won't by the time I die for sure. Um, I've only been doing it for a couple of years, so again, I'm not here to tell everybody I know everything because I don't. There's no way. Um, I have a mentor who's been doing it for 40 years, and he still is figuring. Um, so how many people ate fruit today? Raise your hands. Anybody? What kind of fruit did you eat? Watermelon. Apple. Watermelon last Apple. night. Banana. <laughs> okay, perfect. So all your food was pollinated by a bee or some sort of pollinator today. Okay? So when you think about food on your table, take an apple or orange and say strawberries. If we lose pollinators tomorrow, guess what? That apple just went up 50% because now we're manual pollinating all of our pollinators are dead. And pollinators aren't just bees. Hummingbirds, bumblebees, uh, there's all kinds of brown bees in Texas that we have that pollinate all different kinds of flowers that other bees don't pollinate. So bees, there's all kinds of pollinators, okay? There's thousands, thousands of types of pollinators. Um, but this is where you should start at with Heroes to Hives. That's where I started and that's where the foundation will build you up, okay? Um, what do we know about bees? Um, who wants to take a stab at it? How many, how many I like to be interactive. So there's three types of bees in the colony. Who wants to take a stab at what uh, sex queen. they are? Queen. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. And there's one more. Drone. 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 Right. Okay. Um, who wants to take a stab at the most important aspect of the colony? What is the most important? The workers. <laughs> okay. The workers. What else? Protecting the queen. Okay. What else? Anybody? Abs right. Perfect. Right here. The wax. Right here. See this? The wax, right here. This is your most important aspect of the colony, okay? Without this, the bees don't survive. Mm -hmm. Period. What goes in here? What else? Honey, eggs. What else? Eggs. Eggs. What else? Yeah. Honey, nectar, pollen, eggs. Three things bees are going to do. They're going to gather resources. That queen is going to lay eggs, and they are going to store resources. That's it. Three things, and they are going to protect the colony. So the wax right here, this is your most important aspect of the colony. Without this, your bees die, okay? So keep that in mind. It's, it's the queen, yeah, she requires this, but the rest of the colony also requires the wax too. Without this, they die. Is that built by the bees themselves? Yeah, this was actually drawn out by bees. This is actual wax that the bees grow, right? And, and, foundations right here, they come pre-waxed, okay? Because beekeepers started figuring out that, hey, we need to help the bees however we can. So they started pre-waxing the foundation to help the bees draw out wax quicker because to produce wax for bees is extremely, it's, it's intensive. And we've been only produced wax for so long. I did 30 years of that. Didn't stop producing wax and they turned to foraging and then they died, okay? A, a bee's lifespan is, is pretty quick, okay? It's uh, the summer bee, about 40 to 50 days. The winter bee, a little bit longer, about twice twice the time, okay? Your foragers, don't hurt them. Those are the ones out on their last lifespan because they are doing the most risky business of the colony. They're out foraging for food. That's a big one for a little bee, right? Now, is a bee an insect, a super, a super, a super insect, or uh, just a, a super organism? What do you guys think? Insect or super organism? I go with super organism. Yeah. What, what do you guys think? There, there's really no <laughs> I got right a fitty chance. Of yeah, is it an insect or super organism, right? Oh, if, yeah, a super. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm super. A super organism? Yeah, so if you take one bee, does it, does it live by itself? Can it survive? Yeah. Absolutely not, right? It needs the rest of the colony to live, right? That's, that's what ultimately is going to happen if they're going to be dying. So 
So what is a super organism? A super organism, now take the bee by itself, right? Do you think the bee by itself, that one little worker bee out flying around, can it survive with Oh, so that's what a super organism yeah. is, when they have to have bats. Absolutely, like take, okay. take, the, take the little bee out of the colony, right? Now you just have a bee, right? You don't have the, the rest of the colony, right? I consider a super organism, that's me as a beekeeper. Because without the rest of the colony, the bee doesn't survive, it's gonna die, right? Which is, I merged the colony this last week because my queen, something happened to her. I had to kill her, right? It's just the way it is. And I merged that colony with the stronger colony. That queen was a hot rock, and she's laying back-to-back -back foundation right now. So there's all kinds of different ifs, ands, or buts in beekeeping. There's really no right or wrong way to do it, everybody. If anybody tells you you're doing it wrong, they're wrong, okay? Because mm -hmm. you know, there really is, you can put 50 beekeepers in a room, Ask them one question, and you'll get a hundred different answers. Okay, <laughs> that is no lie because also beekeeping is regional. We live in Texas, right? We live in a drought-ridden area. Uh, I'm not going to keep bees the way somebody over in Virginia or Tennessee is going to keep bees, right? They're probably still on their nectar pools right now. We're in drought. We're, Denise, I have bees in her yard. I have bees in my yard. I'm about to start heavy feeding this week because we have no pollen and there's no nectar coming, right? So also. Uh, so how do you do that? How do you, how do you feed? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Need to get another All right. So to feed, this is pollen patties. I'll kind of pass this around. It's got a little bit of weight to it. Okay. So be careful. That's that's going to Denise's house, and that is supplemental pollen feed right there. Okay. I ordered that from a beekeeping supply. They make it and they send it to you. I bought 40 pounds. Cost about 120 bucks, and that should probably last. I don't know, depending on how how often you get pollen. How do you use? What you do wait, is you, wait, wait. How long will it last? Or for how many? That with, it depends on how hungry the bees are. Right now we don't have any pollen or mm -hmm. any resources, so they're probably going to eat that stuff up real fast. I'll probably the hive, eat. one bag, two bags, two hives. I'll split one pad because there's multiple patties in there. Yeah. There's split. There's probably about five or six patties in there, and they're done. And what I'll do is I'll cut them in strips, and then I'll lay them right on top of the, right here, lay strips, right? Absolutely, so they feed right from the inside, right? Because they gotta feed the mama bees and all the other brood in here and take care of it. And on top of that, you gotta feed the sugar. So 140 bucks like this would feed how many hives in terms of a month? Well, that's gonna be split between mine and Denise's. Well, she's got I've got like four. I've got four. Well, she's got one right now that I'm building up for oh, okay. her. Oh, I've only got one. Yeah, I got two in my house, and then I got another beekeeper that I'll also have to put some uh, pollen on top. Yeah. It's made with pollen. Yeah, there's a little bit of sugar water, honey, um, some bee supplements in there, and it's, I don't think you can eat it. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to eat it. Um, yeah, so that's what you feed them. Uh -huh. It's a pollen supplement. And like I said, I'll be feeding her bees probably within the next few days. Only for people who have hives. Absolutely, yes. Yeah, you want to feed it to, like, I have bees in my property. I'm going to go home and feed them, probably do a bee stinging before first thing tomorrow morning. Because we're, we're in a dirt, dirt, meaning there's no pollen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's what we're going to get into. Why do we need to plant more with the gardening club, right? I'm a big, my, I come from a family of reapers. My parents owned a nursery for 20 years. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, that's why I'm kind of really interested in this. Um, beekeeping more more than likely because I want, I've been wanting to beekeep all my life. And I figure why not do it here in the hill country? We have people that are interested in gardening, pollination, and it's our food source. All <coughs> if we lose our pollinators, we die. That's, that's the bottom line. We can't lose our pollinators. That's what I'm kind of here about is, yeah, we get honey, the raw agricultural commodity that bees produce, that's the byproduct of beekeeping, right? And you don't, honey is not guaranteed ever, okay? So don't think just because you're putting bees in a box that they're gonna give you honey because bees come with diseases, you have pest management. Uh, I'm gonna be treating my bees within the next couple of weeks with alfalfa gaffer because I might have mites, okay? So there's all kinds of things that we have to worry about as beekeepers that also gardeners can help us with, right? Because beekeeping is a symbiotic relationship between the human and the gardener, right? We help the bees, guess what? They're gonna produce us honey. I want honey, but I need more people to be interested in pollinating the area. So that's. Hey, Richard. Yeah. So, as somebody who you know, like I feed hummingbirds, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, and a lot of times I'll find bees on the hummingbird feeders, right? Yeah. Trying to eat out of them, but they have a hard time, and and I buy bee proof. Uh, but just putting out sugar water yeah. for them, yeah. just plates of sugar water. Anybody can do that to let to get them food. Yeah, put like a cup of sugar water in a, in a gallon of water, and then put a hook in, and just pour them out some sugar water. That helps them. Everything a cup of sugar water. A, a cup, cup of, sugar. of sugar. Yeah, a cup of sugar. Yeah. Sugar. Yeah. 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 I do a cup for five, so it's one to five yeah. for the hummingbirds, and they and yeah, the bees like. One to five. Five. Yeah, that's about right. That's about right. Yeah, they're going to drink it. If they're sugar, and they taste it, and they like it, guess what? One cup for how much? About a gallon of water. Yeah. A gallon of water. That's always good. What about the water itself? Yes, water itself is very important, too, because bees, they're going back every five to seven seconds to basically spit water onto the brood. That's how quick the cycle is within the colony. It's a very fast cycle, right? Because bees don't live very long. slow down and their queen kind of stops running for a little bit. So um, right now, like I said, we're gonna start feeding. Okay, because we're in a dip. And I'll be feeding probably until March, maybe next year. Yeah. So beekeeping, guess what? It costs money too. It costs money, right? Um, <coughs> you have to the power point that you use. Come over here. Give me a second. I can pull it up. So if you're gonna, if you're thinking about getting into beekeeping, okay, that's one thing you need to realize too, is it costs money, and it costs a lot of money, okay? And you can rack up a beekeeping bill pretty quick, okay? Like I said, I just did a $200 order and I got three items. I got oxalic acid, I got pollen supplement, and then I got the actual pollen patties that we see, 40 pounds. That sent me back $200, okay? And that was for three items. One of them is really critical, the oxalic acid, which I got a treat for mice, okay? So if you're gonna do beekeeping, Okay. Your soup is going to set you back about 150 bucks to 200 dollars. Okay, I'll I got mine all packed here so you guys can actually see. And please come up here if you guys want to check out the gear and look at it and pull it apart and feel it because I'm all about put your hands on it and feel it and see how it works. You know, more people will be interested. Um, 70 bucks go. just for the box. Okay. The box here you go. With the frame, 70 bucks. <coughs> here you go, Richard. I got it. If you want to see. Oh, okay, I got it right here. Okay. Um, the bottom board right here. Now there's two types of bottom boards you can get. Okay? This is a solid bottom. Okay, I actually switched them out to a screen bottom. Why do you guys think I switched to a screen bottom here in Texas? Air circulation. Abs absolutely, heat. Absolutely, right? You can kill your brood with too much heat. Okay, so what I did was switch them from a solid bottom to a screen bottom and then actually put the screen tops on them, okay? So now there's a, a nice airflow going through my colonies now, not putting so much stress on the bees. Yes, ma'am? I read the bee Bible a couple yes, of years ago. Yes, ma'am? I decided never to be a bee. It's work. It's work. It's work. It is. Work and money. It is. Work and money. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's very hard here. Yeah, okay, and it's easier. Not only is it hot, okay. You're in a bee suit. You're in a bee suit, okay? This is a vented bee suit. 
and I wear a set of, of full BDUs under this, plus combat boots, okay? Because we have African IDs in Texas, all right? I got stung a few weeks back, and I said it would never happen again because I got lit up really bad. Um, I figured out after I got done, I had a hole in my veil. Um, so yeah, new B suit. I had to basically rethink my whole outfit because I got stung so bad. So this absolutely critical to me. If you're gonna beekeep in Texas, do not do it without a full suit, okay? You might see people on YouTube doing it and stuff and say, oh, look at how gentle these bees are. I'll bet anybody a million dollars they can't go to my yard and pick my bees without a suit, okay? So yeah, don't listen to the people on YouTube working the bees without a suit because you know what bees do? What do they do? What else? What do they do with the best? They sting me, right? And I'm allergic. Yeah, and bees, guess what they don't come with? A safety button. When they sting you, yeah, they sting you. There is no safety on a bee. And they die. And people need to also recognize that. Yes, bee stings, but they're only going to sting you but once. And you have to put a little stinger in. Yeah, absolutely. And and that's that little stinger, once that stinger gets stuck in you, that gets sent out through the line pheromone. And once that first stinger goes off, yeah, that once that first pheromone goes off, I last time I worked in my yard, my bees erupted and you could smell a pheromone go off. Is that saying wasps or just bees? I don't know about wasps. I never looked into it. Bees, you can smell it. It's a very, it's a very- It's a high protection mechanism. It absolutely is, yes. It's a protection mechanism. Once that alarm pheromone goes up, guess what it screams? It's a little bit of that call. Absolutely. But when a bee pulls, when he stings, he pulls that top, doesn't that rip off? Yeah. And the bee dies? Yeah, the bees will die after the sting. And that part of the smell that you would smell? Yes, when that bee stings you, it's a pheromone goes off. And the bee smell it. The pheromone comes from the bee? When it, when it dies, right? When that stinger pulls out, there's some type of pheromone that goes out that that bee sends out. We don't smell it, but when, you're, when my colony erupted on me a few weeks ago, I smelled it. Because about a thousand bees come out and they all shoot off the same alarm pheromone at the same time, right? So you've got, now you have a thousand angry bees at you. And you have to, Steel of the Hive is ultimately about mental health. That's why I got into beekeeping. I was just talking to my mentor this morning. He was like, you know, I'm kind of thinking like, is beekeeping really uh, mental health safe? I was like, I don't know, man. I don't know because we, we stress about it, right? Because there's bite involved, right? You've got, you have livestock involved. You kill your, you kill your queen at the wrong time of the year. Guess what? Your whole colony might die. You get a disease right back the whole yard, right? And that can happen. You can get diseases in your yard that can wipe out your entire yard. Got small hive beetles, right? These little beetles they crawl in and they crawl up into your honeycomb and they start laying little larvae into the wax. Right? They'll get into your wax right here and they'll start laying these little larvae all over the place. And what they call is a slime out. It slimes out all your honey. Just you basically gotta pull the comb out and you have to clean it all out. It's a mess. It is, it stinks too. It smells like steel. It's it's really bad, right? Yeah, so small hive beetles, they'll get inside and they'll be down there. You've got varroa mites, right, which is the bee destructor. That's what the beekeepers are calling varroa, is the bee destructor. Because what was it? Varroa mites. Varroa? Varroa. V-A-R. Check it out. V-A-R. I'll show you guys. There it is, the picture camera. These are the roll mites. This is the bee destructor. What they, they do. like a tick. Yep, they, they're like a tick. And it tells you right here what they do. They get inside the cell, you get the queen, she comes in, lays an egg, right? The mites will drop in and they feed on the fat bodies of the bee while they're, get, while they're in the pupating stage, right? Mostly what we've learned is they, they feed on the drones because the drones are bigger, right? The drone, uh, the drone, the drone fat bodies is a lot bigger than the worker bee or the <coughs> bee. So what we found out is they actually go for the drones more. And the drone brood, I don't have any to show. It's just a little bit bigger, right? It's a little more defined. And then when they cap it, it's got a big hump on it, right? If you look at a regular pattern of brood, it'd be nice and flat across. Well, drone brood, you'd see it like flat, and then there'd be like a pattern right here, and it'd be like, it would be like, it would look like a tip of a nine millimeter shell almost. That's the best way I could say it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks like the tip of a nine meter, millimeter bullet. It's a little bit bigger, a little more defined, and when it's capped, it's, it stands over the rest of the cell. That's the best way I can define it. 
is that the same when they refer to cobblestone? Is that what they're talking about? Yeah, it looks like cobblestone. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's like it, the rest because when this is sealed off, when this is sealed, this is nice and flat, right? When it's right. sealed off with grief, then like yeah, you'll see like cobblestone like clumps in the in the wax, and that's your grown, which is your mills, right? Mm -hmm. The mills. What's grown? Anybody want to take a stab at their at their function? Yeah, I mean nothing. What else? <laughs> Mating with the queen. <laughs> Mating sorry, with the queen. Yeah. What's the, what's the grown function? It has one function. Mating with Mating the queen. With that's it. It gets fed. It gets pampered. Taken care of. Everything. That's it. It goes out and mates with the queen. Once it does, it dies. That's it. That's its life. It is taken care of. Um, once it comes out of the cell, it is fed all day, every day. It goes out and flies and come back. It's fed. Go out. Flies and come back. And drones might mate with twenty different queens. Right. That's how it works. Or the queen. I'm sorry. The queen mates with about twenty. She absolutely does. <laughs> my queen's name is Roxanne. All my queen's name is Roxanne. Yep. Um, so yeah, she'll go out and she'll get ready and she's gonna come back and she's gonna start up. That's it. That's her that's her duty. If there if the workers feel that she is starting to go south, they'll kill her and they'll replace her. It's a, it's a very it is, it's a very vicious cycle inside the beehive and you know who makes the calls? It's the workers. It's the females. workers. It's yeah, it's the workers, it's the females. They are they are the health of the colony. They're the ones casting around all the nutrients. They're because they're social. Right? They're, they're feeding the queens to each other all the time. So they're sharing that genetic bio. So we might know that I've talked about this. And it's the only way we think that this could actually happen is the memory and the health of the colony to go and be queen more. So if they feel the queen's going south, they'll kill her. They'll, they'll pull it. They'll pull her egg, right? They'll pull a little egg like this, right? They'll pull this little egg and they'll, they'll form a cell around it. Yep. They know what to do. The bees, the bees always know what to do. They'll, they will always tell us what we're doing wrong. Right? Always will tell us. Never what we're doing right. Like we'll always, what's that? It looks like a peanut. Yeah, the queen cell looks like a peanut. Yeah, but the actual larva, right, is about the. It's, it's really hard to see. It's, it's smaller than a grain of rice. The actual bee larva. Okay, so it's pretty small. Um, if you're looking at it on black cells like this, on the black foundation. It can usually be pretty easy to see if you hold it to the light and you get it at a good angle. You can see the larva down, right? So what they'll do is they'll pull a larva and they'll go ahead and make the queen cell and they'll raise it up to a new queen. When she's hatched out, she'll go out and breed, come back and start life. So the bees always know what's right. Um, you can do queen rearing yourself. You can make queens yourself, um, but it takes it's a lot of work too. And right now when there's no moisture, um, it's really hard to raise queens. Right now we're in that part of season with beekeepers. If my queen dies, I'm in bad shape, really. So my queen is, is very critical to me right now, and I want to do everything I can to protect her. Even the one I got recently is probably Africanized. Um, I still want to maintain her because she's laying awesome pattern for fruit. So um, I want to try and keep her at all costs. Um, so yeah, this is the Varroa mite. All right, this is, yeah, can you see it? Okay, this is what beekeepers are so afraid of. This guy right here, the roll mites. They will wipe out a colony, they'll wipe out your yard. So, what about scorpions? I see on the presentation you say scorpions, yeah, snakes, mice, scorpions. ants. Yeah, yeah, when, you're, when you have a bee yard, guess what? They bring in all kinds of really cool pets. They bring in snakes, they bring in mice, they bring in scorpions, spiders, what they'll do, they'll crawl up in your box, and uh, you'll open your top lid right here, and you might have a scorpion poking out. Something on the bottom. So yeah, there's all kinds of... Trying to discourage us. No, I'm not trying to discourage you. I just... It's the real part of it. You know this. But it's the real part of it. You know this. It's nature. Yeah, it, I'm all about like, hey, giving it to people real. Like, this is what I've experienced. You know, um, I had to change my whole bee yard though because I had ants. Yeah. yeah, I had to set up my bee stand differently just because I had ants. Yeah, but what, you didn't water now or what? No, what I did, um, I actually set up some pole stands and some galvanized pipe and greased my my uh, bee tape and everything. Yeah, so I ran six I ran six T poles right, and I ran two ten foot galleys about I don't know about that far apart, and then ran those galleys down there with some U bolts, and then all the six foot T posts I greased I don't know about six inches up. No more ants. Yeah, so you have to outthink a lot of bees. <laughs> 
much that costs. Yeah, I don't want anybody I to be discouraged by all means, give it all. <laughs> Please, even if it's just planting, get some seed, plant flowers. You know, it doesn't have to be specific what you do. Just be a pollinator, right? We're all gardeners here. That's why we're all here. We're all gardening, right? And you just being a part of it, planting the flowers, planting the crops. Um, uh, what was I going to ask? Uh, diatomaceous earth. Does, oh, yeah. does that hurt bees? Yeah, you want to use, if you can get granular, but I don't think you can get granular bees, you can not I don't think so. I don't think so, yeah. I use that sulfur around the page. Sulfur powder? That sulfur, that, remember those sulfur things you gave? Crystals, uh-huh. Yeah, those things will dry off pretty quick, actually. Really? Yeah. Okay, we'll try that. I, that. I got that sulfur powder from you for chiggers, but, yeah. you know, it's like we're learning if it yeah, works off with anything that. else. Well, powder, and you put it in an old sock and, and pound it, it around your feet. ankles before you start gardening, and it wards off chiggers, but it also does fleas, and now we're figuring out maybe maybe, maybe ants. Yeah. Yeah. And, okay. you and you can buy the <laughs> you can buy the sulfur in crystals at Tractor Supply. I made the mistake of doing that, and then I had to order the powder online, it's because like you want that to put in the sock. <laughs> oh, go ahead. Question? If you bathe with sulfur soap, <laughs> as soon as you come in and take your shower and put, use the sulfur soap, it will kill them. Really? Yeah. Okay. Okay. After you're done with outside work, the first thing you do is use the sulfur soap. I see beehives are always driving out of the field in the sun. Yes. Do you keep layers in the sun? Or yes. Do you put them in the shade? Mine are actually in full sun. They get about, I don't know, four hours in the late afternoon, which I'm actually really Too much heat on bees, it's, it's not good. Yeah, and the bees ultimately they'll maintain the heat in there, they'll maintain the atmosphere. Don't they pick up and leave too if they're not? Mine haven't yet. Okay. Mine haven't yet, and I, I just barely now put screen bottoms over them, and they haven't left yet. So. I have a niece who raises them, and she bought a couple of those um, just getting, you know, so she yeah. and everybody just to go. Sometimes they'll do that. <laughs> yeah, they'll do and that. That's expensive. Yeah, you don't have to right? <laughs> Your money's Usually, flying away. It's, if we're picking up and leaving, it's expect a resource issue or something, you know. So mine are in full sun right now. Um, but again, I have screen tops and screen bottoms. So that air flow through that colony right now is probably the best way to do it. I was going to teach them. That's, that's all right. Go ahead. Go ahead. In reference to that, um, would it be possible to do a little solar panel or a little fan? No, you don't want to fan these because you can dry them out. You can dry them out. Too much, too much cool air will kill them. The moisture, moisture freezes the bees away, so when you put air, it kills them. Yeah, like when we had these freezers recently, um, what was it, a couple years ago, we had this really hot freezer in the ground. When that happened, it's, we have, there's a lot of moisture in the air, right? And my mentor actually lost his colony because the moisture gets inside the colony, sticks to the bees, and then just eats away. So bees are actually really good at maintaining their own atmosphere within the colony. They're very good at it, right? Um, we we can only do so much to help them, and I'm hoping the screen bottoms on my colony is just going to help, right? Because it was. I mean, I felt bad for them. I was like, man, my bees are probably burning up in there, you know? So I was like, okay, screen bottoms. And I have a mentor. He's like, dude, that's all I need here is because it's just so hot in there. You know, I went through the freeze with my screen bottoms, and I only put a cover on maybe once or twice, right? And he's like, other than that. a cover in this right here to protect your bees from like the gold and stuff right so he said i only put one in there for a couple days and those are those are my strongest colonies now so, yeah he said those are his best producers so yeah there's a lot of there's so many different things you can do to keep these things and, and it's fun it's fun you, if you don't want to step in a suit and just like i said plant flowers you know do what you can what's next for you um, are you going on from disease and pest management? Oh yeah, I want to show everybody what small hive beetles are. That's how small a hive beetle is, for real. Maybe smaller. You can't see them. They're, they're real hard to see what they do. This is what they do. See that? Ugh. That's what, that's what small hive beetles do to your, to your colonies. Real bad. Do we have those around here? Yes, we do. We have them real bad. 
What kills them? <laughs> uh, the the pH. What you you can use um, like potash. Um, you can get potash. You can go to like your smoked houses and stuff like that. You get the potash because it's got really high pH. It's acidic. And the larva. The larva right here. That's that's what drops outside. See how it? Look at this right here. That's what they do. See those little larva? Is what they do to your colonies. So that's what happens when you have a small hive beetle invasive problem in your colony. Bat, they yeah. look like maggots. They are. They, they look like maggots. They absolutely do. But they feed on the pollen and the nectar inside there, and they make a complete mess. It's horrible. You have to basically pressure wash your foundation. It's a, it is. It's a total mess. It'll ruin your whole colony. Oh yeah, it'll kill your colony. They'll leave if there's a bad hive beetle infestation. That's another reason they will leave. Is they might have a disease problem, um, uh, infestation of some type. You never know. You never know. They make that decision. Once they make that decision to leave, guess what? There's no change. <laughs> yeah, they make that decision collectively as a colony, right? Because there is no, it's like we, I and, and you, right, with the bees, it's a we as the collective colony, right? When the decision's made, they all make it together and they all do it together. Once they decide to pull the queen, guess what? That's it. She's done. So in bee habitat, mm -hmm. guineas are a great thing for eating stuff like that, mm -hmm. but have you ever seen them eat bees? I've never seen them eat a bee, so I don't know if they're dangerous to bees, but they're really good for getting all these tiny little things. I mean, that's what they eat, you know, and they're not destructive like chickens are. You know, just they won't scratch up your garden. They'll just peck all these little things you don't want to see. Yeah, see, I don't know about guinea vipers. I've never really, I've never tried it or heard about that, but. Um, that's good to know. Yeah, but no, you know, I'm always looking for different ways for like. They lay eggs? Yeah. Yeah, they they're do. They're about the size of golf ball, and they get the Break them with a ball peen hammer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they lay them in the mud. They're super hard. They're really good, but they're they're tough to crack. Not easy. <laughs> tough not to crack. Yeah. So that's the small hive beetle. Um, really, they're they're a total mess. I mean, look, this is what it actually. There's another infestation right there. See them. And the key the key to maintaining this is strong bees. Healthy, strong bees. The stronger the bees guess what? You're not going to have these types of problems because they're going to be able to fend off that, right? And if you have a strong colony, what these bees will actually do is they'll herd them into corners and then they'll propolize them in. They'll like entomb them. It's really cool. Yeah, it's really cool. I love it. Yeah, they do. They'll propolize them in. I actually had one at the bottom of what they were doing. I don't know if you can see right here, but this was actually, they were entombing small hive beetles in this. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, they're really Let's cool. see over here. Yeah. Yeah, they're actually entombing them in this. It was actually a ball of wax right here, and wow. there were dead hive beetles entombed in it. Yeah. Yeah. See that right there? You can actually see. You can actually see like how the curvature of the body of the hive beetles. So they're smart, smarter than a small beetle. And what about the American European fowl brood? Oh, fowl brood. Okay. Fowl brood. Fowl brood is pretty. I don't want to say it's been eradicated, but for the most part, it's been kind of. We figured out how to kind of diagnose it and there's treatment for it, right? Um, but what it does is it's a. I want to say it's a bacterial disease, okay? and it comes with a queen. The queen comes with it, and she starts laying. You gotta burn your hives? You gotta burn your hives with the bees. Yeah. Yeah. When uh, I think it was Australia about a year ago, they found out that Varroa mites had gotten in who were adults and they said every 
anybody within a 50 kilometer radius, kilometer, kilometer radius, I mean, had to burn all the fuel because uh, the girl is Australia is so strict on their infill clause and bringing in um, foreign organisms that it's a zero tolerance there. They say no to all all beekeepers. Guess what? So should you. Yeah, it was a pretty big deal. So yeah, the rural mite that's big. Um, Valbrood, like I said, there's treatment stuff for this now. You can get tests and you you test your you can test it inside the box and find out. Causes range of symptoms in the brood, uh, patchy, irregular patchy brood pattern. We call it a shotgun pattern, right? When you start getting spots in your brood pattern, that's kind of a quick way for beekeepers to diagnose if there is any type of health issue. Your queen, she won't be laying solid patterns back and forth. You'll see like the spotty patterns, kind of like a shotgun bird. So. Next yeah. one is Delbert. deformed wing virus. Yeah, deformed wing virus is caused by varroa mites, right? What that does, the long term effect is deformed wing virus. See the wings here? Look at that. That's what DFW does, the form wing virus. There's, uh, yeah. DW is the mm -hmm. See? No wings. Yeah, and it seems like that's a really pretty critical thing yeah. for bees to have. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> see the mites right here? Look at this. Look at the mites on that bee right there. See them? That's what varroa does. That's the long term effect of varroa mites, the form wing virus. And that's what causes the bees to die because they can't go fly. No, just with varroa, you can treat for varroa, right? With this, yeah, with this, this is out of control, right? This is a this is a severe varroa infestation when you have deformed wing virus like this. You don't ever want your bees to get this sick. Is this that way they would probably jump back? You can probably jump back from this. It just depends on your queen, too. It depends on how sick the hive is, right? That's, it's all a numbers game. If you don't get enough bees, guess what? You're going to have to start ingesting like I had a wheat colony where I had to kill the queen. I had to move those bees to another colony to make them stronger. So it's all a numbers game with bees. If you don't have enough bees producing wax, enough bees to go out and forage, it really is. You can you can lose a colony real quick just because you're weak. You have it's a huge numbers game. If you have a few hundred bees in a colony, right, and say a third of those, you know, say two thirds of those are your your nurse bees, right? They're in there taking care of the nurse bees, and another third are just foragers. key to a healthy colony is strong bees, healthy bees, right? You don't want varroa mites, right? And this is, you guys, this is kind of like a lot of stuff we're talking about, right? And again, don't let it go. It's okay. This, <laughs> these are just diseases that we deal with, right? And this is an important part of gardening and being a pollinator, is understanding certain types of disease and pest management that can go along with, with beekeeping and being an uh, apiary. And the last one you have on here is Nosema disease. Oh, Nosema? Okay. Okay, so Nosema. Yeah, Nosema. Uh, this is Nosema. It's basically bee diarrhea when they get sick. <laughs> it is. It's, that's basically what it is. It's, they get sick inside the colony, and this is, if you guys could see that image, they basically poop outside all over the colony. And if it gets inside, it's just a huge, it's like they're eating them like that. It's not good. Really bad, but it's a virus. Or? Yeah, this is Nosema. I think there's a name for it. Um, Hades Zephyr fungus or fungi. Yeah, see, I can't remember what that caused is. by a spore. It's a spore, right? Yeah, it's a spore. So, yeah, it's a spore inside hmm. the colony. That's what causes it. So, yeah, bee diarrhea. Okay, so the next. Page says local and national resources. Okay. <coughs> Texas bee supply. Okay. Um, one of the big ones, Texas A&M Honey Bee Lab. These guys are awesome. They will come down and inspect your apiary for like 75 bucks. 
they will come in and certify your apiary. And I'm actually looking into this once my apiary is up to strength. I'm going to have them come down, certify my bees, because here's something really cool about bee keepers. We don't have to go through all the red tape and all of the, I don't know, policies of the FDA to sell our honey to, I can walk into Lowe's right now with a crate of honey, I can walk straight to the manager, hey, how much do you want to buy this for? It's a raw agricultural commodity, and that's what it's considered now in Texas. Texas passed some laws a couple years back for beekeepers because what was happening, um, there's a show on Netflix, and it's called Dirty Money. If you can find it, I recommend you watch it. There's one called, um, something has to do with that. I can't remember the exact episode, but what was happening a few years back was China was adulterating honey. What that means is they're basically making counterfeit honey, and guess what that did to beekeeping in Latin America? Wiped it out. And it did. It was, this was a real thing. It cost billions of dollars, you guys. Billions. I did the research on it. What China was doing was making fake labels and shipping it to third party countries, and then bam, shipping it back around to the US. Hey, guess what? It came from Thailand, Vietnam. No longer came from China. But people started figuring out, hey, this is BS. I know they have a lab in Europe that are now, you can send your honey to, to actually have them test it to make sure that's true. You can test your honey in water. Huh? You can test honey in water. If you want to know if the honey that you're buying is yeah. real honey, yeah. take a glass of water and you take a, a stream of honey mm -hmm. and you drizzle it into the water. And if it mm -hmm. goes straight to the bottom, stays in that yeah. form, it's real honey. Well, if were, it goes in and dissolves, yeah. it's not real honey. What they were doing was they were adulterating it with like, uh, syrup, rice syrup and stuff. They yeah. figured a way to basically defraud it. They, the Europeans came up with a way. To, they ran it through a series of tests. It's really interesting the way they did it, and it was it, it wiped out the beekeeping industry in America because it's just like the fake olive oil. Yeah, it was it was yeah. a, it was like some kind of rice syrup or rice honey or something or rice syrup they were using from China mm -hmm. that would they just color it. Huh? They just color it, put a coloration yeah, to it. it there. Anything you could do to make it BS honey, they were doing, yeah. and we finally caught on to it. That's why America said, uh uh, no more. Um, Texas especially because Texas is a huge huge asset. Why are they going to get the beekeepers for doing their job right? Hey, let's let them sell straight to the end user now so we don't have to put labels on our drug. We have to label it just as long as it says raw local honey and then we have to label it saying, hey, this wasn't packaged you know, in an FDA regulated facility. But if you go to say uh, one of the restaurants here, um, what is it, the Silver Sage, you know, if you get in with people like that, hey, can you go work honey in your house and hey, we'll leave you a crate of honey. You know, things like that. That's how you can get in It's also better for your allergies too. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm gonna say around here, I mean even in Hill Country grocery store they used to have some that was local yeah. spicy yeah. or made here. It's yeah. It's amazing when you yeah. pick it up. It's I'm fun. trying to and it's just it's just time. It mm -hmm. really is. It's, it's there's so much time involved in beekeeping and time is a beekeeper's best and worst friend. Right? Too much time or not enough time, guess what? Your your bees might swarm or they your queen might die. Mm -hmm. you know? Okay, so uh, next one, you're talking about the county ag extension. I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead. D A D A N T. Yeah, that's a it's a plant. Okay, I'm just reading down your slide. What was that? Uh, a while ago, you said raw agricultural. What was it? Raw agricultural commodity. commodity. R A C is what it's called. Yeah. R -A -C. It's basically uh, like farm to table product, chicken, right? Hey, you got chicken on your property. Yeah. Guess what? Chickens on your eggs. Guess what? That's a raw agricultural commodity. I don't know how they are with eggs, um, but honey for sure. Um, and once you pasteurize it, okay, once it hits a certain temperature, pasteurization, it's like 120 degrees, I think, 110. It no longer is raw honey. It becomes pasteurized at that point. So you can get raw honey. That's the best thing that happens. Yeah. Your honey goes. Don't want to set in your yeah. truck right yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and my son's ready to take two. <laughs> Heat it a little bit and yeah, just heat it. Yeah, yeah. yeah crystallize it. Oh, the raw. You don't want to. That's better. I love the crystallized honey. Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> that's the best. That's like uh, candy. It is. You could get it out by the spoonful and just eat it. It's the. But the, I, I think it's directly out of the tree. They they just whatever you call it when you crystallize it. You know, they, oh yeah. They take it out mm -hmm. and then they get some. Yeah. 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 You, you keep some. I got a powder. 
Yeah. 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 The damp. Yeah. The damp was just another supplier. County Ag Extension. Yeah. So your County Ag Extension. You want to know anything about your use or your Ag Extension? Get with your County Ag Extension. Um, if you've got more than four, less than twenty here in Ashland Bandera, guess what? You get these all off in a day. So, but it mm -hmm. takes time. You got to build up to the extension. Okay. You can't just put the bees on like they would in my extension. You have to work up. Mm -hmm. I thought it was five acres. I think it's five. Is it it's five to twenty. Less? It's five to twenty, and okay. and it takes five years, mm -hmm. yep. five years of, of beekeeping okay. before you can get the ag exam. But once you get it, yeah, yeah, time is honey. Yeah, it is. It's you can. And it, I'm telling you, there's big ag exemptions for beekeeping. Yeah, ninety so percent. Yeah, it's a it's a lot. Guess what? If you have three thousand, guess what? It's usually put down like ten thousand. Yeah. <laughs> you're not paying ag. You're not paying exemption on that. So beekeeping is big here. Now there's there's a bureaucracy associated with it because yeah. you have to file a report of what you're going to do for the next five years. You got to do yeah, that every five. Years. And then you have to file what you did last year. So, so you have to do that five year plan only once every five years. Yeah. But yeah. once yeah. once a year you have to do a plan or a report. Oh, they do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Every every acre after six you have to have like two hives, and it gets exponentially more. My mentor he's got like thirteen hives. Is that in Bandera County? Oh. Yeah, it's Tarpley County, yeah. Well, it's not Tarpley County, but I, yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking Medina about. County. It's Medina. Medina. Yeah, because I have a client that her property's on Medina and Bandera, so she's got to work her ag extension both funds, right? Mm -hmm. Meaning that she's only can work it on one property. She can't have both because one property's not the correct size of Bandera. Right? So, so if you buy it and it's already ag exempt on the land that you buy, mm -hmm. you have two years to get yours set up. It's five out of seven years. You have to have it no, in. No, 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 if you're no, no, no. established, if you buy property, I, I it's already ag exempt. Yeah, I know I'm not what I know. From I bought mine when it was already ag exempt, and yeah. and I had ag exempt for the last 27 years. It's yeah. five out of seven. You can lay something out for two years, so you cannot produce horses or calves or goats or bees for two years. So you actually have two years to get it to done. To get your ag exempt. To to, to get your beehive up and yeah. going. And if you yeah. don't, then you have to. Yeah, you don't want to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God, it took Not forever. You don't have to, but no. it has to do it. It's worth it. Yeah, it is. 90% less on your taxes. Yeah. At least in Bandera. Yeah, yeah. And with property, with property and, and with the market value skyrocketing, you don't care, right? Because it means a difference of $50 a year. Yeah. And it's a isn't it a Texas law now? And Texas wants us to keep our open land. Texas has legislature has a really big thing going about not dividing Texas up now and all these tiny little parcels and, you know, Crossbreeding, are they? Absolutely, they are. And I bet you they are. You 100% they are. <laughs> I have my colony I just went and cut out from Rachel. Probably some sort of hybrid. Absolutely. And they got little black butts on them. That's how I know they're hybrid, right? Because hmm. bees, you just see what, like orange or caramel color. But when you start getting bees with black stripes and yellow stripes. How does it affect the behavior of the queen? 
Oh, it's, it's if she's Africanized if, or part. Yeah, the queen. The queen is is what's laying the Africanized eggs. The drones, right? Now, if you're gonna now you want to take out an Africanized colony, we call it the Africanized eggs. And how you call an Africanized colony? Because it can be done. You can you can knock an Africanized colony down to to be docile and vulnerable. It, it can be done. Yeah. So what you do? Um, this is how my mentor told me to do it. He said, what you do is you take that queen and you kill it. Right? He's like, you cut her up in about three or four different pieces and you let the bees see you do it. He said, you do it right on top of that flower. Get a knife and cut it up. Right? Because that pheromone, when she dies, it goes out in your bees. Right? And he says, so what you do, you kill her, you drop her in there. And he's like, what they're going to do is they're going to go to start building queen cells. Right? And, and after, it's a, it's, a, it's a time thing with this. right? It really is. So you have eight days. Because once eight days, they're going to catch all that brood. So you want to make sure you have some brood that's fresh, like a fresh egg, because they're going to pull eggs to make a fresh queen, right? So once that queen's dead, they're going to pull eggs. They know the queen's dead at this point, okay? So they know the queen's dead. They're going to go and start pulling eggs. They know the queen's dead. we got to make a new queen. So they'll start making, they might pull 10 or 12 eggs, right? Just to better the chances, because the queen taking a flight, guess what? 12 queens take flight? Guess what? They might not make it back, right? That queen out there taking that mating flight, guess what? Little bird kicks her ass real quick, right? <laughs> so they're gonna pull probably several eggs. Once at that eighth day, once all the brood is capped and the queen cells are capped, you go and you destroy those queen cells, right? Now you've made them completely hopeless to the queen bees, right? All their brood is capped. They can't pull any more eggs to make another queen cell. You go and you cut out all the drone brood, because you got to take the drone brood out. That's the critical thing, right? Everybody thinks the queen. No, it's the drones. You got to take out the drone brood. When you cut it out, you physically go in there and you take out the drone brood and you kill it. Take it out completely. Then you go in, wait a few days for them to be doing this hopeless. Then you go in and you drop a new queen and you let them infect it. It's a time process. It's probably about a week and a half, couple of weeks to do it, right? You can't just go in there, pull a queen out, drop a new queen into an Africanized colony. They're going to kill it. They'll kill it. But it, it can be done. Yeah, it's a process. Yeah. One of the early things in Africanized was just coming in, they were worried that it would block the honey production. <laughs> Africanized are probably some of the best honey producers okay. we have. Yeah. Right. That, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, my, my mentor's got some colonies that I work with them. Yeah. Um, you know what? Let me go and show you guys that. I think I'll have to back. So the ones that are crossbred, are those mm -hmm. pets aggressive or do they get really aggressive? What's that? Hybrid, hybrid. hybrid yeah. it, my, I have some hybrids, and some days are Africanized, sometimes they're not. That's kind of how they're bipolar. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it depends on how they're feeling that day, you know. Um, some days they're really mean. Sometimes I can go in there and work them. But what I've noticed too is usually is a weaker colony isn't going to be so aggressive, right? Because they don't have the numbers to sacrifice like a larger colony would, right? My smaller colonies a little more docile. My big colony, uh, they don't care. They don't care about me. Hey, let me put a shameless plug in for Richard. Uh, if you have watched anything on YouTube, if you look up the channel Time is Honey, yeah, this is that's his YouTube yeah. channel. And it, this will be posted there. Yeah, this is what I do. And this is just for me so that way I can keep tabs on my yard, right? A lot of people have YouTube channels up, and there's going to be so many critiques out there. If you do YouTube, guess what? There are so many beekeepers that are going to tell me I'm doing it wrong. Well, guess what? You don't live in Texas, okay? So you keep your bees. I'll keep mine. Stay out of my business. I'll stay out of yours. <laughs> or turn off comments. Yeah, turn off comments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, turn off comments. Yes, ma'am. Time, yes, time, time, time is honey. honey. Yeah. And Do you have cards? I don't. I don't. Let's see here. So this is. Let me see if I can get this to stay up here a little bit. And. Okay. Who's the book you like? Holmes, H O L. This is my mentor. I was out working bees with him. These are his out yards. Are they hybrids? These are both. We're not, one of these was Africanized, for sure. But um, once we pulled one of these boxes off right here. And the African bee, you said it has black stripes? The queen bee? Or? No, it's the black butt. When we, black butt. Yeah, it's a black butt. When you get bees interbreeding, mm -hmm. they're going to start taking on all kinds of different colors. Mm -hmm. Right. Like I see in bees, they're all black, right? But I wouldn't mind having some because they're really cool looking. But those are also a hybrid style bee. They're not, 
the standard Italian is what we would call these that we know that are bred in captivity that are bred with gentle commit. Right? You get bees out here in Texas and you got queens out there mating, guess what? I guarantee you she's gonna be out mating with an African ivy dog. I guarantee you. We were, me and my mentor were talking this day, I was like, you think that the drone that she only mates with her drones is like no way. There's no way because there's just too much of a bee population. That drone, when it's a Persian queen, what we call it, she puts out that pheromone that she's not there. And she might fly by 20 different trees that have drones shooting out of them. Guess what? They just picked up 20 drones that are now an African eye that are breeding with her queen. Guess what? She's going to bring that African eye trait back to the colony. She's getting stung on a The best way to do it is flood the area with drones with non African eye trait. No. No. no, the best way is for like your keepers to basically bring the tree out. Yeah, and it's it's probably going to take thousands of generations to get the tree out. But it sounds like it's pretty common though. Well, now this is now they're coming out at us right here. See that box that was ninety pounds of honey right there. Ninety pounds. And that ain't good for your back. It's it's dead weight. It's very very heavy. When you pick up a 90 pound box of honey like this, guess what? You're going to feel it. So again, it's work when you're when you're thinking about doing bees. Just one of those, just one of those little slides when you slide them out. Hmm? That thing is heavy if it's fully loaded with Oh yeah, one of these probably yeah. six, seven pounds of honey right here. So times that by 10, so about 70, 80 pounds, maybe more, depending, right? Now you got to, it's all depending on how thick your honey is out here. Right? You can have thin honey, you might have thicker honey. So it's all depending on the viscosity of the honey. And but that depends on the flowers that they use. Absolutely. Yeah. Everything. Yes. Everything depends. It was like you said a while ago, it's really funny because the bee world can't do it by itself. Cannot. But the same with the baby of the plant. It, Absolutely. It takes the flowers. One, right? It cannot take one person to, to plant a plant mm -hmm. and all the bees in the world are going to live on it. No. It, it takes a whole, everybody has to work together mm -hmm. and they make bees. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Because again, like say 100 acres of, of wildflower, right? That could sustain, say, 100 colonies, possibly. And there, I've talked to uh, people out here with them, um, one on Ford and Scott going in the back there, Ford Martin. I don't know if anybody knows him. But he's got a field that he he plants with wildflowers in the, in the spring. And I stopped by and talked to the guy. I was like, hey, I like your field, what you're doing. He's like, yeah, I leave it open for the pollination. And then in the fall, he harvests um, alfalfa. So he's doing this field both ways, which is my bees, I'm sure, are pollinating this field because as the bee flies in, they do my own field too. So, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if my bees are out there working this field. What kind of problems do you have with the different chemicals and their beauty and poisons that are that are dangerous? Do you have a lot of loss from them? Absolutely. Absolutely. Roundup. By oh, poison. Yeah, poison, yeah. Um, when we, Cause we have a lot of thistles out, right? And well, guess what? The bees were pollinating thistles this year because it's been so dry the last few years. The bees did not care what was out this year. They were working it all. Well, right? they use the crepe myrtle. What's that? Uh, absolutely, they'll hit crepe myrtle. Yeah. You see that one in a lot. Yeah, the crepe myrtle. No, crepe myrtle's a bird. But, but when the veteran beekeepers hive died, that was from somebody spraying Roundup, yep. pick something, okay? We, yeah, we They're using it. the poison that they, well, it's the only way to kill this. No, there's plenty of ways to kill things naturally. Yep. We'll let Linnea take over from here because she knows way more than me. I tell you what, the crown, is it beard? Roll beard? Crown beard? Crown beard, they're tall, yellow kind of, kind of flowers, and they grow all over, and they don't take much water. I mean, I never water them. I need to spend that.
I wish, and I know that'd be nice. Well, you could, and that's a, that's another thing. If you pay close attention to your local wildlife, right, yeah, and your plant life, right. you could look at the pollens and have yeah, a pretty, pretty good pretty idea of what you're bringing in. Right? I saw a lot of red pollen coming in with a paintbrush that you were doing, right? So I know that's that's paintbrush, paintbrush, because I got out to mess with the flowers to see what kind of pollen was going on, and the Indian paintbrush is just a red pollen. The purple pollen, thistles, right? All the yellow pollen, guess what? You're coming from your ailment daisies, all the, all the other daisies. We had those purple verbenas earlier this year. Remember yeah, that? The purple verbenas, yeah. Yeah. The, the purple. Uh, the Man, they were all over. Yeah. All over. So yeah, um, any flowers really. Is I actually have a recipe that calls for a certain type of honey. I had to order off of Amazon. I can't remember yeah. who it was, but my daughter bought me a cookbook and it was to make uh, macaroons, but from the Paris cookbook, yeah. and it said what. <laughs> yeah. I had to order yeah. That's particular. <laughs> Did you get stung that day? No, I didn't get stung that day. Really? No. I could, I could have swore that somebody, maybe it was your mentor, was shaking their hand like, oh, you, you got, got me. Stung. Yeah, because you sweat in the gloves, and you get stung through them. So you just got to double gloves on that. Uh, uh, yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. I'll be tweaking that one. Um, um, in your pheromones. Have you ever tried to do uh, lavender Golden crab. Golden crab. I knew it was something your, like that. Um, <clears throat> your smoker. No, what I use is cedar. Lavender, <clears throat> lavender oil, lavender, kill, uh, calms the vision. Yeah. So all you have to do is you know, make your thing. Just put like five or six drops of uh, extra water, water, so they'll keep growing. Yeah, of course. And yeah, and it'll burn in. How would I get a water jacket? I have not noticed that before over there. Yeah. But you know, once you get these, the other side, like right through the barn aisle, the right hand side, there's a whole pocket where they can grow. How would I get a water jacket? Look at the hose on it. It ain't that far last year. Not when, and there was about five or six bees, uh, beehives here. Once the pheromone goes off in one colony, guess what? Uh, all of them do. Uh, like, a so it's like all of a sudden they come out. Yep, yep, down the whole line. Guess what? Now you got, not, you don't have one box, now you got four boxes of bees from the colony. How many, what do you call a colony when you refer to your bees? I call it a colony, bee box, bee okay, There's so, so many reasons. There's I know. So many that's like problem. people say, oh, it's a beehive, it's a colony. Well, hey, okay, it's I call it a box of bees, my bees. You know, okay. <laughs> bees don't, don't care. Colony would be one house of bees. Yeah. And then we have a question over here oh. and over here. Uh, and this is not a plug for anybody, but in 2016, my husband and I went to the John Box, and they had a tour of a place, and you actually get a cover for yeah. it was really cool. Here. So if you want to get some hands on, I'll let you do that kind of thing. It was really. Place in Round Rock. Round Rock, what? I just want to put this in the mouse. What is it called? Honey? Round Rock Honey. Honey? Okay, that's all I needed. I can look it up. And then, and then one more thing. Richard, I, th I think you'd ask about, you know, if you could just plant flowers, what kind of flowers plant? Yeah. They're called uh, golden crown beers. They self pollen. I mean, they self regrow every year. You don't have to do anything with them. I never watered them. They were beautiful. Now, she suggested maybe I ought to water them right now since we ain't had rain in a month, but to keep them going. So I might try that, hauling some water by hand over there. Uh, but anyway, sorry. I just wanted him to. Uh, and then you talked about local beekeepers, but you already covered that. And then online forums, yep. YouTube, and then uh, mentorship. Yeah, mentorship. Like if you know beekeepers, you can actually have them sign up and be a mentor for uh, a veteran beekeeper. Ice for heroes. Yes, ma'am. And then, uh, hang on a second. Let me go back to the agenda because I don't think I had a slide for everything you had on here. You already talked weather. You already talked setup. 
ag exemptions. You already talked about that, right? Laws, you kind of did that, and feeding. So I think you've covered yeah. it all. Okay. So now we just open it up to Q&A, or not that they're afraid to ask a question. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question for the ladies for the, I don't know anything about garden. Well, I, that's not true. I have a garden, okay, but. No, no, I'm black thumb too. I'm black thumb too. My, my thing is, is trying to find plants to plant in the yard to help with the bees. Nobody freaking has them. You can call every nursery yeah. around here. I work at True Value. We put up a sign that says, um, uh, you know, plants that are, you know, that attract bees, helpful pollinators. Mm -hmm. And I think we've been trying to order more. Yeah. I know that Rick, Rick comes in and I don't know. I, mean, I like looking we, at the flowers. Are we doing okay? Can you put horse mint down on that list then? Horse, yeah. horse mint. Horse, horse mint. Horse mint. What? Whorehound? Whorehound. We had um, a whole bunch of whorehound. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't bought so much, and I know that it, it got too big for the little pots, so I know that uh, some of our Well, a lot of it's seasonal, too. Yeah. Once, once you get hit a certain temperature, you're not going to be able to get it, and the growers stop growing it. But we, so. we did have some, and we're waiting again. We're going to start our – we've started our fall <laughs> wish list and things like that, but we did have whorehound. We did have several things. Um, if more than one person requested that. something. The horse mint not only is good for, for bees, but also your butterflies and, yeah. I mean. We definitely, we definitely are putting or buying more plants that um, I know I, I, uh, I get to hang out with the bees and the, there's a carpenter bee set coming around yeah. and, and uh, the butterflies, ladybugs. So I know that we're really trying our best to supply more pollinating plants. And then when we do our, uh, as the temperatures cool, we're in the dog days of summer right now, so we are really battling that. But I know that our moving board, Mr. Boyles, has really said to go along with some of the people in the community. Drought tolerant plants. To help with, yeah, the drought tolerant plants, and then also to help people like Rick that is trying to have bees and enjoy the flowers and things. So we're definitely in the works of that. Um, we've well, just got to get. It's a beautiful flower. Yeah. It is. It's gorgeous. Really cool. The bee bomb came out this year, too. Which one? The bee bomb? The oh, bee bomb is really yeah. pretty. Yeah, it's yeah. purple. Yeah. And it will just it's real nice. Looking. We're on the medicinal yeah. plant, too. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's yeah. Just like but not only that, Oh, yeah, those are really pretty. I love that. Yeah. I'm going to send that to our person. And people don't know about it. I have a question. Hey, so um, if y'all, yeah, bee bomb, yeah, that's bee bomb and horseman. They just love it. Yes. Bee bomb, horse. Oh, is that what it is? It's the purple and, flowers grow on the side of the road. Okay, okay. Horse, 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 horse. Yeah, there's some good nurseries in Kerrville as well too. Um, it's the one. It's the one in town. She works in town. Which town? Oh, Bandera. Bandera. Yeah, uh, but Bandera. also because uh, there's uh, two separate people that order for the Lake Hills and for right, the one in town, mm -hmm. in Bandera. And we've got it on the. Yep. Is that the same for a high for heroes? No, different programs. Really? Yep, yeah, different serious. programs. This is the actual beekeeping <laughs> teaching program. Okay, this is where they teach you. And then the highs for heroes, that is that's an actual mentorship program for other beekeepers. If you know a beekeeper, hey, tell them to sign up for this. That way they can mentor the veterans. That's what this is. I need to do this. Yeah. Yeah, this is a mental program. So you have mentors, right, that sign up, and then it's it's all nonprofit based program for veterans. Okay, I'd like to uh, – remember last meeting, if you were here at the last meeting, we talked about okay. natural pest control and we talked about solitary bees, right? And there was a good flyer that went out on solitary 